A few years ago, I developed the most compact possible LEGO McPherson strut suspension, and I made a video about it, and I'll link it up here. But today, I want to show you guys my new version, which is equally compact, it's the exact same width, um, but the suspension characteristics work much better than that previous version. So let's figure out why. The main problem with my previous design was that the shock was held in place on one side at the bottom and on one side at the top, and they were opposite sides, meaning that when we loaded the thing, it wanted to twist rather than compress. So we could only use really soft shocks, otherwise the whole thing would bind. And even with those soft shocks, we didn't always get nice compressive motion. It would usually twist a little bit and bind, and so the suspension characteristics were pretty bad. On this one, we can see that suspension characteristics are very nice. I'm pushing down only in the middle, and yet on both sides we've got the springs compressing nicely without any motion. And that's because I've um, mounted the top of the shock here into one of these brackets, which then pivots around that red point there. You can also see that on this side the shock is pushed as far out as possible. It is right near the wheel, uh, and that means that the contact patch of the wheel, which is somewhere down here, is almost directly underneath the bottom of the shock, and that means that once again that motion from the wheel is transferred directly upward, rather than creating a kind of moment that can upset the suspension. And then we come to the steering. As you can see, we've got a pretty simple steering rack system here with just, you know, rack and pinion. And you may have noticed that from the top view here, these tie rods are, uh, are angled, and that's usually a problem. We usually don't want that because that means the wheels are angled inward uh, and we get some kind of um, positive toe. But in this case, it actually works out okay because we can see that they're also angled like this, where the lower wishbones are angled downward while the tie rods stay straight. And those angles are actually the same, meaning that in terms of this, this length here, the tie rods and the wishbones are the same width. And that means that despite all of the strange angles going on, we have very minimal bump steer. There is, there is a tiny little bit going on, but it's, it's within acceptable limits. And finally, now that we have this level on the table, we can take a look and see that there is a very slight caster angle as well. Um, it's barely noticeable, but it is there, and that means that we do get the, uh, the caster effect where the wheels will self-straighten out after a turn. Well, that about wraps it up for this video. I know that for the last suspension video I made, lots of people asked for instructions. If that happens with this one again, I will make a video uh, detailing how to build this. But um, in any case, see you next time.